Hello viewers today we are going to talk about national income accounting national income accounting measures the economy of overall performance it does for the economy as a whole what private accounting does for the individual firm or for the individual household This accounting enables economists and policy makers to assess the health of the economy by comparing levels of production at regular intervals, track the long-run course of the economy to see whether it has grown, been constant, or declined, formulate policies that will safeguard and improve the economy's health. Now, the primary measure of the economy's performance is its annual total output of goods and services, or it is uh, called the aggregate output. There are several ways to measure the aggregate output depending on how one wishes to define the economy. So one of the most important measures of calculating the aggregate output is gross domestic product. What is gross domestic product? Gross domestic product it is the value of all final goods and services produced within the boundaries of a country in a given time period. Now how do we major uh, gross domestic product you know there are basically two uh, ways to measure the gross domestic product one is the expenditure approach and the other is the income approach first of all we are going to talk about the expenditure approach to determine gdp using the expenditure approach we add up all uh, the spending on final goods and services that have taken place throughout the year now the national income accountants use precise terms for the type of spending and they are uh, number one uh, component of uh, gdp is personal consumption expenditure uh, number two is gross private domestic investment number three is government purchases of goods and services and number three is net exports let's see what is consumption consumption consists of all of the goods and services bought by households it is divided into three sub categories non durable goods durable goods and services non durable goods are good goods that last only a short time such as food and clothing durable goods are goods that last a long time such as cars tvs services include the work done for consumer by individual and firms such as haircuts and doctor visits for whatever we are spending for our personal consumption is going to fall into consumption spending investment consists of goods bought for future use by the investors investment is also divided into three sub categories business fixed investment residential fixed investment and inventory investment it is also the addition to the existing physical stock of capital Business fixed investment is the purchase of new plants and equipments by firms. Residential investment is the purchase of uh, new housing by households and landlords. Inventory investment is the increase in firms' inventory of goods. Uh, if inventory were falling, inventory investment is negative. Government purchases are the goods and services bought by federal, state, and local governments. This category includes uh, such items as uh, military equipment, expenditure by the government on defense, highways, and the services provided by government workers. It does not include transfer payments to individuals such as social security, social security payments and welfare. Because now, why are transfer payments not added to GDP? because transfer payments free allocate existing income and are not made in exchange for goods and services so they are not part of gdp the last category net exports account for trade with other countries net exports are the value of goods and services sold to other countries that is exports minus the value of goods and services that foreigners sell us and that is import for net exports are equal to exports minus imports net exports are positive when the value of our exports is greater than the value of our imports and negative when the value of our imports is greater than the value of our exports net exports represent 
the net expenditure from abroad on our goods and services, which provides income for domestic producers. Now let's see how is GDP measured through income approach. The income approach to measuring GDP is based on the accounting reality that all expenditures in an economy should equal the total income generated by the production of all economic goods and services. It also assumes that there are four major factors of production in an economy and that all revenues must go to one of these four sources. Now, these four factors of production are land, labor, capital, and an entrepreneur. Therefore, by adding all of the forces of income together, a quick estimate can be made of the total productive value of economic activity over a period of time. So, according to income approach, GDP is the sum of the incomes earned through the production of goods and services. That is, GDP equals to income from the people in jobs and in self-employment, for example, salaries and wages, plus profits of private sector businesses, plus rent income from the ownership of land, plus interest earned on capital. So if you add these up, you get GDP through income approach. Now there are some other measures of income in the economy also. Let's see what are they. The national income accounts include other measures of income that differ slightly in definition from GDP. It is important to be aware of the various measures because economists often refer to them. To see how the alternative measures of income relate to one another, we start with GDP and add or subtract various quantities. Now to obtain gross national product, GNP, we add receipts from factor incomes like wages, profit and rent from the rest of the world and subtract payments of factor incomes to the rest of the world. Let's see what is GNP. For GNP is equal to GDP plus factor payments from abroad. That means the income that is coming to a country minor factor payments to abroad that means the income that is going to other countries whereas gdp measures the total income produced domestically gnp measures the total income earned by residents of a nation for so the difference between gdp and gnp is that of the ownership and boundary if that income is produced within the boundary, it will be added to GDP. And if that income is produced by the uh, residents of a nation, by the, uh, a country that owns those residents of a nation, it will be added to GNP. For instance, if a Japanese uh, resident owns a department building in New York, the rental income he earns is part of UF GDP. Because it is earned in the United States, it is earned within the boundary of United States. Now, but because this rental income is a factor payment to abroad, that means Japan, it is not part of UFGNP. Another example that we can take is that of maybe Mitsubishi car. Now, Mitsubishi is owned by Japan. When that car is being bought in Japan, the income will be added to GDP. Now, if somebody is buying, if somebody is buying that car maybe in Australia, then that income will be added to Japan's GNP and Australia's GDP. To obtain net national product, we subtract depreciation of capital, the amount of economy stock of uh, plant, equipment, and residential structures that wear out during the year. Now, net national product is equal to GNP minus depreciation. In the national income accounts, depreciation is called uh, the consumption of capital. It equals about 10% of GNP. Because the depreciation of capital is a cost of producing the output of the economy, subtracting depreciation shows the net result of economic activity. Net national product is approximately equal to another measure that is called national income. 
GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within an economy in a given time period. To see how this definition is applied, let's discuss some of the rules that economists follow in constructing this statistic. It is always the value of current output. The sale of used goods is not included as a part of GDP. For example, if a car that is produced in 2015 and the income that is earned by producing that car will be added to GDP of 2015. And if that car, if the same car is sold again in 2019, the income earned in 2019 will not be added to GDP of 2019 because when it was produced, its income was already added to the GDP of 2015. Another problem is the problem of double counting. GDP is defined as the current value of all final goods and services produced in a nation in a year. But what are final goods? They are goods at the furthest stage of production at the end of a year. Statisticians uh, who calculate GDP must avoid the mistake of double counting. Now, what do, what do we mean by double counting? Counting output more than once as it travels through the stages of production. For example, imagine what would happen if government uh, statisticians first counting, uh, counted the value of tires produced by a tire manufacturer and then counted the value of a new truck sold by an automaker that contains those tires. The value of the tire would have been counted twice because the price of the truck includes the value of the tires. Now to avoid this problem, which would overstate the size of the economy considerably, government statisticians count just the value of final goods and services in the chain of production that are sold for consumption, investment, government and trade purposes. Intermediate goods, which are goods that go into the production of other goods, are excluded from GDP calculations. This means that in the example that I have just given you, only the value of truck would be counted or only the value of tire would be counted at their final stage of production. The value of what businesses provide to other business is captured in the final products at the end of the production chain. Now let's see once again that what is counted in GDP and what is not counted in GDP. Consumption, business investment, government spending on goods and services and net exports are counted in GDP of a given year. Now what is not included in GDP are the intermediate goods, that is the value of uh, input that is going in the production of a final good. The transfer payments are not added to GDP, uh, now transfer payments are the payments that are made to people uh, without their services in exchange. And why are transfer payments not added to GDP? To avoid double counting. All the non-market activities, all the business that is not registered with the government cannot be counted in GDP because it is not registered, there is no data about that business. The used goods are not counted as a part of GDP, for GDP consists of the value of output that is currently produced only. So it in excludes transactions in existing commodities um, such as existing houses. We count the construction of new houses as part of GDP but we do not add trade in existing houses. We do however count the value of real estate agency in the sale of existing houses as a part of GDP. The real, the real estate agent provides a current service in, uh, in bringing the buyer and seller together and that is appropriate part of current output. The underground economy or the black economy or what we call illegal goods are not counted as a part of GDP. Some examples of transactions that generate goods and services that might not make into major GDP are also uh, illegal drug dealing, working while collecting unemployment benefits. Moonlighting, that is working a second job for cash, working as an illegal immigrant, working for tips that are not fully reported, illegal gambling, or selling homegrown produce for cash. 
there are two main type of tra transactions that people attempt to hide. Number one, the transactions that are not inherently illegal, but for which uh, people are not complying with tax or immigration laws or uh, other government regulations. Number two, transactions that are themselves illegal, such as drug dealing. Now, the remaining activities in the other underground economy occur mainly because people are trying to avoid losing some government benefits or to avoid paying taxes and these activities should be included in GDP, but somehow they are not added to GDP because they are concealed.